Hello students, so today we are going to learn about human skeleton. Now, as you know in human, that human has like six bones present. But in case of infants, there is more than 70. How come it is more in number? Reason is in, in uh, newborn or infants, the long bones are numerous, three to four in number. Whereas in case of the longer bone, numerous or the femur, which as they grow up, fuses to form a single bone. Thereby, it becomes 206 bones. Now, today we learn all the six hand bones and their position. So, you can come to the larger picture over here. We have got a skeletal model where you can see all the 206 bones in detail from the miniature model. Now, as you learn human skeleton, as you know 206 bones are present out of which it is going to two parts. One, the axial part and second, the appendicular part. Axial part consists of the skull, the thoracic cage and the vertebral column. Whereas, in case of appendicular, it forms the forelimbs, the hindlimbs and the girdles, pectoral and the pelvic girdle. So, we will go in detailed part. Now, as you know, 206 bones are there, it is split as 80 in case of axial skeleton and in case of the appendicular skeleton, 126. Now, the skull part is made up of 29 bones, which in all comprises the axial bone. The skull individually has got cranium, the facial bones, the higher apparatus and the ear ossicles, which in all is 29 followed by thoracic cage and then the vertebral bone. So I go part by part. Now, in case of skull, it has got cranium, there is eight bones. Which are those eight? The frontal part, the front region, the parietal, middle region and the back part is the occipital region. Okay, in the side bones, they are temporal. Now, other than this, there are two more. Spinoid, which is medially present, slightly anterior, that is the spinoid and the ethamoid, they are single bone. So, there are eight bones in our cranium, in which frontal is a single bone, the parietal, a pair of bone, the one which is at the back, occipital, single bone, on the sides, temporal, pair of bone, and spinoid and ethamoid, single bone present at the central medially placed. Now, so eight bones of the cranium. Further, the facial bones. Now, facial, it is we find a single bone, but it is made up of 14 bones. Which are the 14? The inner to the socket, it has got two bones, which is lacrimal, that is pair of bone. At the tip of the nose, the nasal bones are present, which is again pair. Now, the lower region is made up of cartilage, it is not bone. At the tip of the nose, it is the nasal bones. Now, Towards the medially, the vomer, we are on the sides, the inferior nasal concha, the palatine, the roof part, there is a mouth region internally, at the top region, the maxilla and the mandible. So, there are eight bones out of which some are paired and some unpaired. I repeat, lacrimal, which is present in the socket of the eye, which is a pair of bone, the nasal bone, the tip of the nose, pair of bone. Single vomer medially, inferior nasal concha at the in inner region to the nasal bones, then the maxilla, the mandible, the vomer, and the palate and the roof part. Vomer and the mandible are the single bones, all other are pair of bones. So, in all 14 bones. Then the ear ossicle is made up of three bones each, so six are there. It is made up of incus, malleus and stays. Stays is the smallest bone of the body. The important one, the smallest one. Then, when you move to internally, the mouth region, just I am moving over here, the hired apparatus which is attached to the tongue. Now, we usually mention tongue bone, but tongue does not have a bone. It is attached to the hired apparatus which is present in a region. So now, the cranium has got 8, facial 14, 22, plus 3 on the either side, 6, ear ossicles 28, and plus 1, the tongue or the higher apparatus, which is 29. So we can take into account 28, skull bone including the higher apparatus 29. Clear? Now, second part of the axial is the thoracic cage. It has got two bones. 
Okay, what the sternum, which is in the central region, the ribs. Now ribs are twelve pairs, twelve on either side, so twenty-four in number. Sternum, the single bone at the anterior end, it is a manubrium, middle body part, and the lower xiphoid process. Now the manubrium helps to connect the clavicle, which is the collar bone, which also called the beauty bone. Then the remaining part joined to the first pair of ribs. The middle body part is connected with the second, third, fourth, till the seventh, and the coastal cartilage which connects the three other pair of ribs. And the lowermost part that is the xiphoid process at the lower end. Now this xiphoid process helps in connecting to the diaphragm, which helps in the breathing process. Right? So one single sternum, twelve pairs of ribs, so twenty-five number. Now these ribs are again divided as true ribs, false ribs, and floating ribs. Now first seven pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh pair are true ribs. Why they are true ribs? Because they are directly connected to the sternum. One, two, and three. Now these three are connected with the coastal cartilage. Hence false ribs. So I repeat: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The true ribs. One, two, three, the false ribs, and then two floating ribs on the either side at the back. They are not connected to the sternum. They are half connected towards the back, but half not connected. So it is hanging. That's why the name given as floating ribs. So in thoracic case, twenty-five bones. In case of the skull, twenty-nine. Now coming to the vertebral column, the back bone. Now in case of the back bone, I just turn it around. Okay. Now you can see the vertebral bone very clearly. Now there are twenty-six bone in actual, but when you count the numbers, they are thirty-three. Why thirty-three? Why twenty-six? I'll come to it. Now just below the head region, the occipital condyle, it is connected to the first one that is atlas, which is comes under typical cervical or cervical vertebrae where atlas axis. Then the typical cervical total seven are there. Then followed by the thoracic. You can see from here how to identify the first till the twelve. They are connected to the twelve pair of ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve pair of ribs on the either side connected to the twelve thoracic. And the earlier one, the seven cervical. Where one, two, three, four, five. They are the typical ones. Are same. The uh, at atlas the first one and the axis. Which you call as the yes bone and the no bone. That is uh, nodding your head upside and the sideways movement. Right now, after this is one, two, three, four, five. The lumbar bone. That's the lower part of the back. And then the sacrum, which if you count one, two, three, four, five number. But they are fused to form one single bone. Whereas the tail bone, which is again four in number, you can see the demarcation, the lining. One, two, three, four. So four, they are joined together to form one single bone. Okay. So if you count seven plus twelve thoracic, nineteen plus five lumbar, twenty-four. If you count this five plus four nine becomes thirty-three. But since they are fused, the five bones is counted as one, and the four tail bone or the coccygeal bone as one. So twenty-four plus one, twenty-five plus one. 26. So in vertebrae there are 26 bones present, 26 vertebrae present. So when you take into account the axial part, I repeat the 29 bones in the skull, which includes the hyoid apparatus, the 25 thoracic cage, and the back bone, which is 26 in number. So 29 plus 25, which is 54. Plus 26, 80. So in case in the axial skeleton, there are total 80 bones present. Clear? Now out of the 206, I hope now the 80 is clear. Come to the remaining 126, which is girdles and limbs. Now girdles, we have got the pectoral girdle, which is the clavicle, which is a pair, the collar bone, which as I mentioned attaches to the manubrium of the sternum and to the Scapula. I again rotate it once again, so you can see the scapula part. One, two, which is the back bone, which is again pad. So the collar bone clavicles is attached to the scapula from either side. So the pectoral girdle has got one 
two scapula and the two collar bones. So they are four in number. Similarly, pelvic girdle in the pelvic region or the hip region, which is one, two in number. Now each pelvic girdle or the hip bone has got three parts: the major part, the ilium, the ischium part, and the lower end, the pubis. So the pubis connects with the either side of the hip, forming the pubic symphysis. Okay, so even though ilium, ischium, and the pubis is present, they are part of forming a single bone. So single on either side, two bones. So four pelvic girdle, pectoral girdle, and two pelvic girdle together forming six bones of the girdles. Now, so it becomes eighty-six. Now remaining one twenty is of the limbs. So there is four limb, hind limb, four limb, your hands, hind limb, the legs, right? So we can see sixty of the four limbs, sixty of the hind limbs. Now which are the sixty? Now I take one single bone here. In case of four limb, you have got the longest bone, which is called as humerus, and then you have got the ulna and the radius, followed by the hand region. Here we can see the wrist bone, which is the wrist bone is eight in number. The small nodular structure one two three four one two three four. That is, there are small nodules. Two pairs are present for the eight in number. This is the wrist bone, carpal. Then the phalanges one two three four five. Okay, one two three four five phalanges. Your palm region, right? And followed by the phalanges, uh, which is one two three one two three one two three one two three and one two in case of the thumb region. So I repeat here the wrist bone. There is a carpal. The metacarpals one two three four five. And the phalanges one two three one two three one two three one two three one two. So they are fourteen in number. So if I take into account the humerus one, ulna radius three, eight carpals, five metacarpals, and fourteen phalanges. Total thirteen number. So thirty on left side, thirty on the right side. So when you say thirty on the right side, thirty on the left side, total sixty of the four limbs. Now lastly. The hind limbs, which is again 60. Which are those 60? Again, you take the right side, the longest bone of your body, which is femur, followed by the tibia, which is a thicker bone, fibula, the thinner bone, followed by the ankle, like your wrist. Here is the ankle, that is the tarsal, and then like your palm. The sole region, which is the metatarsal, again one, two, three, four, five number, and the phalanges same like our finger digits, the digits in the toes, which is fourteen in number. So longest bone femur, followed by tibia and fibula, tibia thicker one, fibula thinner one, uh, the tarsals they are seven in number, metatarsals which is five number, and the phalanges again fourteen in number. So total twenty nine. Why twenty nine, not thirty? Reason is the patella, which is the knee cap, or is also called as sesamoid bone. Okay. Now, so in all thirty on the one side, right side, and thirty on the other side. So it is sixty. Sixty of the hind limb, sixty of the fore limb. So now it together forms. One twenty, one twenty plus six girdles, one twenty-six, and the eighty axial bones, which total forms two hundred and six bones. So I, I hope you know which are the two hundred and six bones. One point to add over here, as it will knee cap is also called as patella. It is also called as sesamoid bone. Why sesamoid bone? Because it is fluid filled. Hence, named as sesamoid. As we see our grandparents, dada, dadi, nana, nani, they get. Uh, knee problem usually in the older age. Why? Because the sesamoid bone, which is filled with fluid, they start to desiccate. Because there is there is more friction in the femur and the tibia. Because of which there is problem related to the knee or arthritis, as we use the term. Arthro means joint, itis means inflammation. Inflammation in the joints. Clear all of you? So 206 bones. I hope. the all the bones to the name and numbers is very clear so thank you all